this is a how to make your first beat video for the Electron Synthtech. If you are wondering about the basic workflow and how you can get started, well, this is the video for you and this will help you decide if you want to purchase it or not. The link is in the description box, which is an affiliate link which helps support this channel at no additional cost to you. So let's get started here. So the first thing we need to do is plug it up using audio cables so we can hear the audio coming out of this machine. So I'm gonna start with plugging up this black side of this quarter inch audio jack into the output of the Syntac. And then I will take this red quarter inch jack and then plug it into the right side. And then I will take this plug and plug it up into my audio interface, which is the Apollo Solo. All right, so the next step will be to turn it on so we can get it to work. And it is right here, this power switch, and then it's loading the OS right now. So the next thing we need to do is check the volume of our unit. You can turn up and down the volume using this parameter right here that says master volume. I turn it up to 12 o'clock. So the next thing you want to do is go to an initial project so we have something clean. So we're going to hit this cogwheel button, go to load project, then we'll navigate to create new. Don't worry if it looks a little different on my screen, if you just got yours. And yes, we'll hit yes. So this cursor is how you would navigate through the menus. So you can navigate up and down, left and right. And yes allows you to confirm and then no allows you to back out of a screen. However, you can hit this cogwheel again and it'll bring you back to the main screen. So what are some more basics about this? So this unit in itself is a drum machine and a synthesizer, which has 12 different tracks and then four retriggering tracks. So track number one sounds like this, which is a bass drum. This is a snare, clap, hi-hat, and so forth. Synth, well that's a bass, synth, a chord, synth sound, and then a metallic bell sound. These other tracks right here are the analog tracks. So the first thing that you can do when you're setting it up is you can navigate to this button right here, which is the synth button. You can press function and synth to bring up the different modules. So you can select different modules right here and assign them, even MIDI. So yeah, toy, tone, chord, bits, alloy or a symbol, clap, PC, SD, which is snare, and then bass drum. In hindsight of that on nine, on track number nine, if we go into that, we have the analog stuff, the analog drums, which are bass drums, snares, rim shots, noise, and synth dual VCO, and even MIDI, or you can disable it. And then on this track, which is track number 12, you can put cymbals inside of that and metallic sounds like hi-hats and so forth. So how do we switch sounds? Well, you can pick sounds out via this way. So what you need to do is press function and the three dots, which I will refer to that as the hamburger menu. Hit both of them at the same time and then navigate to sound browser. Now that we're in the sound browser, we can do a couple of things. So hitting the left cursor will bring up review pull, sort, ABC, filter, and search. What I like to do is use filter so I can select whatever sound that I want. I recommend that you keep your drums organized on tracks one through four. That makes it a whole lot easier to uh, do other things as far as programming goes and sequencing. So we can go into kick and we'll select kick by hitting yes, then hit the right cursor. And now you can 
see nothing but kick sounds. And you can use function and yes to hear those sounds, audition them. And then once you're done and you select the sound, let's go ahead and select this sound right here, hit yes. And then you can just go back to the synth engine right here. To speed up the workflow, what I'll do is I hit clear from this screen right here, and then I'll go into clap because I want to clap. And then I'll hit yes from the filter section. Track number three, I'll select that track and then I'll put a hi-hat in it. So let's go back, filter, clear. Let's find a hi-hat. Next, I will select track number four and we'll get a open hat. So go into filter again, hi-hat, symbol, there we go. And then we'll preview that. Now we'll go back into the synth engines, pressing the synth button. All right, and now we addition all this stuff. So basically when you see this order, it is again, bass, drum, clap, snare, hi-hat, cymbal, which makes programming very easy and leaves these four other tracks for your bass, synth, chord, or etc. The next thing we're gonna do is set up a BPM. So you see this little metronome icon right here and you'll see it's flashing because of the tempo. Let's press that button and you can set that tempo up. So I'll set it up to about 124. You can also set up swing by using these parameters right here. And then we'll set it up that way. We'll set it up to about 60%. And then we can exit out by hitting that button again. And now let's talk about the first way to program. So the first way you can program is by using these tracks and turning on sequencer mode so that you can enter in stuff kind of like old school, like the TR-808. So what I'm gonna do is press 1953. I meant to say 13. I failed you guys. Yeah. Now let's hear that back. So now we have programmed in the kicks. Now, what if we want more than just one bar? What can we do? So the first thing we need to do is press function and page. And this will bring up the pattern screen. Right here you have length, which right now is at 16 and 16. And what you can do is use this parameter to increase it. You can also set this up per track, by the way. So you can do polyrhythms. So I'm gonna set up for 64, since we're already in double time. You can also change the scale of it, which overall changes the speed. Pressing function and yes will allow you to do that per track. So now, when I play it back, what do I have? Or let's go ahead and get back into the synth engine, this track, so we can exit out. You can also uh, exit out of that by going new by pressing the no button. And now let's hear that again. Let's hit record so we can enter sequence mode and play. So as you can see, when I increased that pattern, it brought everything to it. So you can navigate that by pressing the page button and you'll see that this LED light will light up for pages one through four. All right. So when I navigate to it, I can see that everything has changed. I can change stuff on the fly. So I'm gonna do that and let's hear that sequence again. All right. So now let's press the record button and let's talk about live recording. So what I'm gonna do is go to track number two, which is this clap. 
And what I need to do is press record, play, and I can record unquantize. If you press record and play again, you can record quantized. And I messed up, but that's cool. And it will quantize. So let's exit out and we can see the claps. And let's exit out of record again. Now the next thing I want to do, since I'm pressing on track number four, I want to add that in, but I'm going to do live recording, but it's a little too loud. So how can I adjust the loudness of each and every individual track, which there are 12 tracks. What I can do is use this level parameter, this level and data parameter, and turn the volume down so it's not so harsh. Now we can go back and record that in. Let's do it live. So record, play, record, play again, keep it quantized, and we're going to add that in there. All right, we got something now. Now the next step, let's just add those hi-hats. And now we have our first beat. Mm. Now, that sounds cool. That sounds great. So now the next step is going into this right here. We're going to use track number six, which is a chord track by default. Now, this is where things can be a little complex, but it's pretty simple because we're going to move on to sound design. So in chords, I can change the chord progression or the chords by using these corresponding eight knobs. So I want to change the, the sound a little bit and you can change tune. I can change the punch. I can change the Okay. And by the way, when you touch on one of these parameters, you see what it does up at the top. So that is a cool thing about this syntax. We can change the chords. So I want to look for a minor seventh, which would be a lowercase m and a seven. And that will give me more of like a jazzy chord. Now, the next thing we're going to do is go over here and add a melody. So what I want to do is press function and track and access what is called scale mode. So the keyboard will play different notes, but since I'm using chords, it's going to play different chords. Right now I'm in chromatic mode, but you can use E to adjust which type of chords you want played. So I can go to chromatic, Anon, Dorian, Phrygian, and so forth. We'll go Alien. So what if I want to lower the root note? So you can do that as well. Let's go into root note and we can change it to a B an A sharp, an A, or to a G and so forth. So what I'm going to do for this progression is press two, five, six. Okay. Okay. 
So let's go ahead and do that. So let's press record and play. Hold up. Now there is something that I forgot to tell you. Well, what if I wanted a pre-count or a metronome? Well, you can do that by pressing function and the pattern button. So now I have a count. But what I want to do is this right here. Let's press function and hold metronome. And then you can turn on click right here. And you can also do different time signatures, pre-roll count. So let's go ahead and do a one bar. So every single number is the amount of bars that you will have to before you record. So I want to go ahead and do just one bar. And then, so that way it'll give me time to kind of fill it in. So let's press record and play. out of the screen by pressing no and I can turn it off let's turn off the click because we don't need it all right so again remember you, you can still adjust the volume and stuff like that let's go ahead and turn off the keyboard mode for now and now you can see that the LED is not lit up and you're back into playing different voices. So maybe let's turn down that sound. You can also turn down the sound too by doing this right here. This is the mixer. So press function and LFO and it brings up the mixer. And there's three different pages too. So function LFO, mixer two, mix three, external mixer, internal mixer, and so forth. So you can turn things down in real time using these parameters. So let's exit out of that. So let's go ahead and write a bass track. So that's number five. Say you was in keyboard mode and you wanted to control the bass from where we was at with the chord. Well, you can press track and then select that track while you're in keyboard mode. So we know we're writing a bass, right? So what I want to do is this. You can turn down the octave of the bass because it doesn't have that lower volume that we want, that lower uh, pitch. And as you can hear, since I already selected that scale, I'm still in that scale. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and enter that bass line real quick. So let's go ahead and record this in real quick. And I will press record and play at the same time. And just let it go through it. Let's say we messed that baseline up. What you can do to re erase it is by going back into the record and then you can see where you entered the notes. So let's go ahead and delete all that. Just press page and go through the sequence and then return back to page one, which is uh, one four. All right. So now let's just exit out and then repeat the process. Now that we have that, let's press record and play at the same time. Now that we have the bass line in, let's talk about a little bit of sound design. So the bass that I have in that track, which is in track number five, and just hold down the track just to let you know that you're in it. Let's go ahead and exit out real quick of keyboard mode. And what we're gonna do is mess with some of the bass. So now that we have the bass up, we can mess with some of the tone of it. 
So the first parameter right over here, E, that I'm messing with right now, uh, controls feedback. And the next one is modulation. So let's hear that in retrospect to the track. So I can mess with uh, this right here, which is modulation envelope. I can do overdrive. Which increases the loudness, so you might want to turn down the level. This distorted. I can choose the punch. And then I can mess with the decay over here. And then ratio. But what I really want to do is just change the tone a little bit. So I'm already on uh, negative 12. So let's go down to 24. Let's control some of that transient right there. And let's go into decay. Let's make it tighter. What if I wanted to do some filtering of that particular track? Well, let's go into this right here, which is filter. And then you can control like the different filters. So this first parameter is going to control the sweep. So let's hear that in real time. And then I can change resonance right here. All right, now I can also change the filter type. And I can even turn it off. And then you have a filter envelope or envelope depth. And you also have at the top, you have a filter envelope. In hindsight, you have an amplitude envelope too as well, which you can change that. So let's go ahead and mess with that a little bit. This will give it a longer pad feel. You can shorten it, of course, uh, using this would be decay. Let's shorten it by doing sustain. And you can ultimately affect other things too as well while you're in amplitude. The next thing while we're in this amp button right here, you can control the different sins. So what you have is a sin effect, which is delay and reverb. So right now, if I was to add delay, this is how that bass would sound like. And if I was to take that away and add reverb, this is how it would sound like. And then you have this parameter, which is volume. So let's go ahead and lower down that which ultimately affects the gain of that track. You also have pan too, so I can pan all the way to the right. Turn up. Or to the left, you can't really hear, but. But yeah, you can do that, of course. So that delay sounds weak, so how can we adjust the reverb? Well, all you have to do is press function and reverb. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that again, function, and reverb, and now we have control all the, over the reverb. You could do pre-delay, you could do decay time, which ultimately will make that wetter. Of course, we don't wanna do that at all. <laughs> and matter of fact, I can, but I'm gonna just uh, go back into amplitude and then adjust that out. But let's go back into reverb, and then you can adjust the reverb, and you can adjust the frequency gain, like the shelving, and you also can choose if you want it more so in the higher frequencies or the low frequencies. So the next thing I wanna talk about is applying modulation. So how do you do that? 
So let's say we have this sound right here and I want to apply an LFO to it. Well, you have two LFOs that you can use by tapping on LFO while the LFO menu has one or two that will allow you to go to it. But let's apply some modulation. So I have this bell sound and then I can just go over here to which side I want to mess with. Let's mess with it over here where it says impact. So let's say I want to affect the impact. Let's go back into that LFO on track number eight. So let's go ahead and affect that impact on this parameter right here, which is D. And now we can select a destination and send that LFO to impact. So once we scroll down, you see impact here and then hit yes. And now we have that ready to go. So the first thing we want to do is hear that modulation, how will it sound like? So we need to go to H, depth, and we'll mess with speed a little bit. And you have what you call multipliers. You can kind of hear that right now. And you can also do fades too, where you can fade out the LFO. So it doesn't ultimately affect that sound all the way. You can have different modes too, trigger mode, hold, trigger mode half, and then you can adjust the waveform and change the waveform to something else. So we can do random, we can do exponential, square, and so forth. And I like that. So we're gonna do a negative edge square so we have some pulse width modulation or whatever. And uh, yeah. So now let's figure out a melody and lay it down. So I think I have something with this. All right, let's lay that down. All right. And yeah, it will overwrite that too. So I like that. What I want to do though, is let's go ahead and add a reverb to that. So let's go into amp, let's add a reverb. And then I'll go into the synth sound and mess with the different forms. Turn down the level of that track. Now let's hear it. All right, so we have another track that I wanna work with. So I'm gonna press track number seven and highlight that. And let's just lay that out real quick and then we'll mess with it a little bit. So three, 11, five. All right, let's record that in. So let's say I didn't, I don't like that sound altogether. Like I don't like that engine. Well, I can switch it on the fly. I can just go into the synth engine here, double tap or press function and synth and change that to a different thing. Like maybe a toy or whatever. So you can do that on the fly. 
but mm, I don't like that. So I'm on that track, which make sure that you uh, keep up with which track that you're using. And what I'll do is this right here. Let's go into the browser and change the sound that way. Well, there's two ways to navigate to the browser and I already talked about one of them with function and the hamburger menu. Uh, you can also do this right here uh, as well. You can do function and sound browser and change sounds that way. So let's go into filter because clearly I'm not in there and I can just pick out a sound at my leisure. So I have some leads right here, boom. And of course you can audition them. So I like this sound right here. Let's audition it again. We'll see if it'll work. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes to add that in. Well, yeah, so we made a first beat, but there's a little bit more to this. So one thing I wanna show you is something real quick and simple. Now, what if you wanna perform this so you can get more of a feel of that? And you already know everything is fine. Uh, the first thing I wanna do is just go ahead and just press function and uh, track, cause I have, I'm in keyboard mode still. So now that I'm out of keyboard mode, uh, what I wanna do is press function and bank, which bank will allow me to do track mutes, just like the MPC. That's why I love this thing. So the next thing I wanna do is this. Let's go ahead and press play. And hit the corresponding tracks to mute it. So please leave a comment below if this video was helpful to you. If you have any suggestions for a certain feature, just let me know in the comment section and I will get to you as soon as possible.